Welcome back to another edition of Viper Bites, Thursday Night Football Edition. This week, we've got the Carolina Panthers and the Houston Texans squaring off in Houston, where currently the Texans are eight-point dogs. Now, saying all that, uh, in the last five games, the Carolina Panthers are 4-1 and one against that spread, and the road team has covered in five of the last six Thursday Night Football contests. Now, Houston, on the other hand, there are no slouches when it comes down to uh, being underdogs. They've got plenty of experience in this. And they've covered in four straight games. What does this all mean for your Thursday night uh, football action and fantasy football squads? Well, I'm going to break it down to you, give you some numbers to kind of look into as we get into it. First off, the injury report, though. Uh, Carolina, uh, some injuries to watch. Offensive guard, Pat Eflin. He is out with a hamstring injury. He's on the IR. And defensive end, Yatir Gross Matos, he is also out with an ankle injury. Now, on the Texans side, we know, obviously, that Sean Watson is out. We won't get into that. But some other injuries we've got down the pipe in the last couple days. Tyrod, Taylor, hamstring, he's out. He's on IR. He's going to miss the next three contests. Nico Collins, he's also on the IR with a shoulder injury. Danny Amendola, hamstring, out. And then Terrace Marshall, concussion, unlikely to play, as is Justin Reed, an injury to watch there as well. He's got that knee injury. For a team that's already shorthanded, like the Houston Texans, being without two of your top three wide receivers is a huge blow, not to mention being out your starting quarterback. Tyrod Taylor cannot cut catch a break when it comes to his evolution at a quarterback position. Uh, he was in Buffalo. The next year they drafted Josh Allen. He went to Cleveland. All of a sudden, Baker Mayfield was there. Then he went to the Chargers, and then he had that punctured lung kind of incident there, and all of a sudden, Justin Herbert ascended. Is Davis Mills the next one to ascend in the aftermath, in the shadow of a Tyrod Taylor injury? That's to be seen here. So let's pump the brakes here a little bit. We'll get, like I said, we'll get into these numbers a little bit, what to kind of expect in this contest. Now, we're going to start. This is basically a beauty and the beast type game. You know what I'm saying? When we look at this matchup, Carolina, they're the beautiful team. You know what? You've got weapons galore. You got Sam Darnold playing some fantastic ball. You've got DJ Moore. You've got Robbie Anderson. You got Terrace Marshall. You got, man, you got Christian McCaffrey, who's one of the best looking dudes out there. I'm not afraid to shame. I have no shame. I have no shame. I'll say it. Christian McCaffrey is a good looking dude. Now, when that, what all breaks down to is, the defense as well, Caroline, it's clicking as well. This is one of the most well-rounded teams in the National Football League. And they're going against a spunky Houston Texans type team. So let's call Carolina the beauty in this situation. And really, we all are the beauty because we're all being held captive by having to watch the Houston Texans on a Thursday night matchup, prime time. But you know what? Here's the thing. We all we're, we can call the Texans beast when it comes down to this. You know they're holding us hostage. They're holding us against our will to watch football. But you know what? At the end of the matchup, at the end of Beauty and the Beast, you find yourself rooting for the beast. You know, and maybe Davis Mills can get us to root for the Houston Texans when it's all said and done. You know they're going to be out there a little bit of gumption, a little bit of grit, a little bit of everything. Houston's going to come with it all day long. I don't think they're going to roll over eight points. I think Carolina's still going to cover that spread, but I think it's going to be a little bit closer game than some people are are anticipating based on paper. Now, let's take a look at why the uh, Carolina Panthers are such a beauty of a team to watch this year. You know what I'm saying? We've got DJ Moore. He is ascending to that wide receiver, one type player under Sam Darnold. He is becoming that primary guy, 19 targets in the first two games. You know, uh, Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall, they've got about nine targets apiece coming from Sam Darnold. So you know Darnold is looking for DJ Moore. And it's not just that Darnold-Moore connection, it's real. So you take a little bit of a dive into it a little bit deeper. Darnold is 12th best in on-target throws at 80%, 7th best in passer rating at 117.5. And And this is coming from a clean pocket of all 31 quarterbacks that are qualifying for this. We'll get into that A dot and intermediate routes and all this other stuff. But to sum it all up before I get into the fancy numbers for people who don't want to hear the numbers, DJ Moore is not just a deep threat this year. As of years past, that's kind of gone to Robbie Anderson. But DJ Moore is getting a lot more of those intermediate throws, a lot more options underneath, easier plays to make, and making the most of those opportunities. So 
Sam Darnold, let's talk about him a little bit. He has looked pretty good early on in the season. He's got 585 passing yards. He's averaging 20 fantasy points per game, eight uh, yards per attempt. Uh, we're talking about, and then we look at this matchup last week with the Cleveland Browns where they faced off against the Texans. Baker Mayfield, 213 yards passing, one touchdown. He added another rushing touchdown, and Cleveland had a pretty comfortable victory over the Texans. I would expect Darnold to do a little bit more than that. 275 from Darnold, probably two touchdowns, three touchdowns, depending on how involved Christian McCaffrey is going to get. You'll see on my uh, on Wednesday there, we did bold predictions for uh, my week, and I was huge on Christian McCaffrey. I would not be shocked if Christian McCaffrey goes for 100 yards receiving, 100 yards res- rushing, and three touchdowns. I, I think Christian McCaffrey is about to explode on Thursday night football. And when we take a look at, in deeper on Christian McCaffrey and his ability to do so, he has told 130 plus scrimmage yards and 29 touches in his first two games. Uh, miss after missing a good chunk of last season there. Uh, you look at what Nick Chubb did last week. 95 yards rushing, 11 carries. Uh, Demetric Felton, he, he kind of chimed in there a little bit too for uh, Cleveland. Two catches, 51 yards, one touchdown against this very same Texans defense. Christian McCaffrey is one of two backs, Dalvin Cook, with 100-plus scrimmage yards in both games so far early on. Now, this year, so far, we're going back to DJ Moore. That A dot is 9.5 yards, and he's racking up those easy catches for fantasy. He is money this year, and he's established himself as Donald's top option. And this goes back to the final preseason game. He has a 26% target share Early on through two weeks, we mentioned those 19 targets. Well, he's got 14 receptions for 159 yards and that touchdown. Uh, We talked about Moore is back to be more of that intermediate receiver. We talked about those 9.5 A dot after averaging 13.7 the season before. So they're not taking those deeper shots. He's getting the more easy, more reliable abilities to make some yak after the play. He's definitely a player. You're starting him. You're starting... You know what? I'm not even afraid. To put Sam Darnold's going to be pushing QB1 territory this week, and I think we're not going to talk about it nearly enough. Now, DJ Moore is firmly on that wide receiver one. He's going to crack the top 12 this week. Book it. The thing I'm looking for is he is probably going to match up with, if healthy, and here's a big if, Terrence Marshall, but he could be out with a concussion. So then in slides a six-rounder from 2018, uh, Trayman Smith. He's going to be coming in on that right side, and he's not exactly a shutdown guy when we're talking about corners. This is a matchup that totally favors DJ Moore, and I would not be surprised if DJ Moore has a huge, huge game. But you know what? The Texans have been – maybe it's the game script. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the way they've been able to control the ball because they've been very underrated early on. But they've kind of been limiting wide receivers to the seventh fewest fantasy points per game early on. And we're talking about the 12th highest – Target share 20% out of the 102 wide receivers running at least 25 routes. That's DJ Moore. So I don't matter how good this Texans defense is. DJ Moore is a smash play this week. On the flip side, Robbie Anderson, we talked about him being the deep threat. His A dot is 21.9, which is the third highest among wide receivers. That was DJ Moore territory last season. Now, we talk about how that role, it's its kind of a, more of a fragile type of thing. It's more hit and miss, boom or bust when talking about Robbie Anderson, 11% target share. And really, outside of that 57-yard touchdown against the Jets in that revenge game in week one, he's been pretty much fantasy irrelevant. That said, DJ Chark, you know what? He went for three for 86 and a receiving touchdown in week one on 12 targets in this very same matchup. So, Robbie Anderson, I'm probably putting on my bench. I'm not quite comfortable starting him this week. Unless I unless I have no other options, he could be a boom type player. Terrace Marshall, keeping up with the Carolina Panthers receivers. You know what? Six receptions, 43 yards through two weeks. He's definitely a distant third when it comes to the routes and targets. Well, I shouldn't say targets. He's got nine targets, same as Robbie Anderson. But when it comes down to routes run, it's not quite the same. Uh, last week on 24 of the 41 dropbacks, 59%. Now, Dam Arnold has made a little bit of an impact, three for 55 on four targets while running 16 routes compared to Ian Thomas's 13 routes. If there is a spot that has zero relevancy in fantasy, it's that tight end position for the Carolina Panthers. And maybe Terrace Marshall is a de facto tight end, even though he is a wide receiver when it comes to this offense. 
especially when you got Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore already on the outsides. You got Christian McCaffrey for out of the backfield. Terrace Marshall, kind of that wide receiver three. But you know what? Talk about these tech. Maybe this is something. Maybe we're considering Terrace Marshall that tight end type player in this role. The Texans have given up the second most catches, nine, and receiving yards, 88 and a half per game, two tight ends through two weeks. Now we want to flip this over to maybe the most underrated aspect of the Carolina Panthers, and it's that defense. We're talking about a team that has built over the last two years a defense through the draft and how it's worked out so far. We are talking about one of the most effective defenses. They have not trailed a single snap so far in the 2021 season. Now that is impressive. And that's talking about they've played Carolina, or sorry, so Carolina has played New Orleans. They've, they've had some good matchups, especially with the Saints coming off that huge win over Green Bay in week one. Then they come in and get totally stuffed out by this Carolina defense. Um, they've been getting pressure at a staggering rate, 67.6% of the dropbacks. There's been pressure there. Not ideal for Davis Mills making his first career start for the Texans. Now, we're talking game script here. We're talking eight-point dogs. We're talking about Carolina's defense. We're talking about that pressure. Their ears are going to be pinned back again this week. And I don't know if Houston has the firepower to stop or keep this defense honest. Texans offensive line has done a pretty good job through two weeks, but this is a different beast altogether when it comes to this Carolina uh, defense, man. Like, I mean, they're good. I mean, they're real good. Now I'm just going to pull up some notes here on the Houston Texans. I don't know why we're really talking about them because it's not pretty. It's really not. Now, when we talk about this, and this is something we're talking about, we just kind of coming off that Carolina defense, how they're going to have their ears pinned back. Well, Houston with Davis Mills at quarterback against Cleveland coming off the bench, he faced a stacked box 57.1% of the time. So Mark Ingram meets Shaq Thompson. You know what I mean? Uh, Phil Blinsey, uh, the other guy there, David Johnson. <laughs> you know what? It's going to be tough sledding between the tackles. It's going to be tough sledding getting into that second level. This Carolina defense is going to take a page out of Cleveland's book and make Davis Mills beat them with their arm. And his only option out there, we've talked about Danny Amendola being out of the lineup. Um, Nico Collins being out of the lineup, he's really only got Brandon Cooks to throw the ball to. And even against Cleveland Browns, he did that. You know, he get nine targets to Brandon Cooks, four receptions, 28 yards, and a touchdown. Now, let's talk about Davis Mills here. He's making that first career start. What can we expect? He completed eight of 18 passes for 102 yards and a touchdown to Brandon Cooks, like we mentioned. He also threw a pick, and that's in two quarters of relief action against the Browns this Panthers defense I'm going back here I mean look at the numbers the numbers don't lie we're going to get into these numbers they lead the league in like just about every statistical category punt on defense points allowed rushing yards passing yards allowed you name it anything that's allowed they're the best at it right now of not allowing it now we talk let's take a look the Panthers defense has looked like they're the real deal 21 points 380 yards allowed against in two games that is the best. In victories against the Saints, like I said, the Jets. So we're not really counting that game because that was what it was. But now let's talk about Brandon Cooks, who is really the only viable option in fantasy because I think Davis Mills is going to have to target him. Game script is going to allow you to get going at it. And we will talk about who he matches up with and why he could be effective if that Texans line can hold up and give Davis Mills a little bit of time. Now, Cooks is the only receiver to see more than two targets last week. He finished with a 50% target share, and the receiving core behind him is thinned right out. We're talking Chris Connolly. We're talking Anthony Miller as the next man up here in that Texans wide receiver room. He's uh, scored 18-plus fantasy points in each of his first two games. He's fifth in receiving yards with 210. Um, the Panthers haven't been tested. They weren't really tested against the Saints there. James Winston was doing James Winston-type things, and they've only allowed 124 yards per game two wide receivers through two weeks but that is we're talking Marquez Callaway we're talking you know rookie Elijah Moore we're talking Corey Davis who I love no disrespect there but it hasn't been any top end talents Brandon Cooks is probably the best wide receiver they face to date right now uh for the Panthers defense now going back we talked about Collins being out Amadola being out Chris Collins ran the second most routes he's ran 30 of them through two games 30 routes two games 
not ideal. Anthony Miller coming over from the uh, Chicago Bears. He might get a good run here this week. Uh, Jordan Atkins ran out more routes than Farrell Brown. Farrell Brown had a good first week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, but he only managed, I think the re- number is 17 uh, routes for Atkins, 12 for Farrell Brown. But he didn't manage to get seven a 17-yard catch on two targets. So there's that if you want to dig deep. I mean, this, this is not a good matchup to play any tight ends. The opportunity's there. But the skill level, the skill position players aren't there. Now, going back to Brandon Cooks, I talked about the 50% target share. He's going to be matching up against Deontay Johnson at least 33% of this matchup. And we've seen Deontay J- Dante Jackson go at it. That is why they went out and got J.C. Horn early in the first round this year. Dante Jackson is a bit of a weak link. If they can get Brandon Cooks matched up on him, there is going to be that threat of a big play at any point when that's gone. So as soon as Davis Mills sees Dante Jackson there set up there, if it's not cover three, he's going to throw that on. If he gets one-on-one, Brandon Cooks versus Dante Jackson, look out, it's going there. Guaranteed, put money on it, and they're going to try and set this up at least as often as they can. 33% of the time, I guarantee you that's going to be the matchup to be looking at. Now we talked about the stack box. We talked about the Texans' backfield. How bad is it? Well, Mark Ingram led the backfield in carries last week, 14. Rushing yards, 41. And... We talk about uh, Phil Lindsay scored the only touchdown of the group on a 22-yard pass. David Johnson ran the most routes at the running back position with 15. And it, they, there, there was, there's a negative game script here. Like it's, it's not going to be favorable. They're not going to be running the ball. David Johnson may have the most value of these backs because he is running those routes out of the backfield. It's going to be a negative game script. They're going to need to pass. They need to get into this game somehow. But the Panthers did limit. Alvin Kamara last week to just 30 scrimmage yards. So that's not a good sign for the Houston Texans if they're trying to get this offense going. Now, running back snaps through two games. Uh, Mark Ingram leads this group with 55. David Johnson, 48. Phillip Lindsay, 34. Throwing Rex Burkhead for another 21. Previously, Tyrod Taylor was getting some run there too as a quarterback. It is ugly for that position. What does this all mean? How are we all breaking this down? I'm sorry, Houston. We have a problem here. You're going to fight. You're going to be in this game all game long. You're going to give it your best. But at the end of the day, Carolina is going to come out ahead of this game. I'd say eight points is probably the floor on this one. I I think Carolina wins this game by 13. Like I said, Christian McCaffrey, he's going to go off 200 scrimmage yards, 100 rushing, 100 pass receiving. You know, you know, maybe you might throw in a pass. I don't know how, how this game is going to shake out here. But look out, three touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey going to go off. Look for that continuation between Sam Darnold and DJ Moore to continue to heat up each and every week. Uh, I think uh, DJ Moore is going to have another touchdown, 115 yards receiving. I think you're looking at about 65 and maybe a touchdown for uh, Robbie Anderson here as well. So if you got Panthers, you're starting Sam Darnold as a QB2 and feeling comfortable with it. I think he's going to have QB1 numbers when it's all said and done. You're definitely starting Christian McCaffrey. That's not even thinking about it. You're definitely starting DJ Moore, no doubt about it. Robbie Anderson, maybe is a wide receiver three, maybe is a flex. I'm a little bit worried about his target share being at that 11% kind of run number. It is a little bit worrisome. Terrace Marshall, you're taking a wait and see. You're not playing any of these tight ends, even though it's a good matchup for both Dan Arnold and Logan Thomas. I'm just, there's better options out there. Defense, DST, fire up them. Uh, Fire up them Carolina Panthers. Get ready to roll. On the Texan side, you're not playing Davis Mills. You're not going Mark Ingram. You're not going David Johnson. You're not going Phil Lindsay. If you had to choose one of those three running backs to maybe have an impact, it's probably David Johnson in the passing game. Brandon Cooks is both the only viable option, and I see him more as a wide receiver three, maybe a flex play in week three. That all said, this is the Vipers Viper Bites here coming at you live. The handle's almost there. It's Matt Donnelly FF. You can check me out on Twitter. That's at Matt Donnelly FF. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday, though, 9.30 Eastern, to catch the Viper cast with myself, Calvin Shoemake, Tara Roberts, and Major Caldwell. We're coming at you live. We're bringing you all the breakdowns, your starts and sits, your waiver questions. We got it all. Make sure you're tuning in on that on the YouTube, the Vipers Network, or DynastyVipers.com. With that said, you know what? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.